I have been asked to do a problem using the microscopic energy balances, in particular an example starting with the energy equation. So I'd like to start with a very simple problem. This is a problem with heat conduction in a slab. The problem is a tall, wide, rectangular slab of steel has a heater on one side that holds the wall at T1 and a heater on the other side that holds that wall at T2. What is the steady state temperature profile in the slab? What is the heat flux in the slab? The first thing to notice about this problem is that it asks about a, pro uh, a question about something that's quite zoomed in. It asks about the steady state temperature profile in the slab. When a problem asks about the distribution of temperature with position in an object, that is automatically a microscopic problem. A zoomed in question like that requires the use of the equation of energy. In our class, we've been using this handout for the equation of energy. It's available on the web. And in this handout, the energy equation is given here in Gibbs notation. And in addition, it's given in Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical coordinates. The energy equation gives the relationship between the temperature profile, which is what we're looking for, and the various factors that affect the temperature profile, such as the velocity distribution within the material, time, the spatial distribution of temperature within the material, and any sources in the material where the sources are viscous dissipation, electrical energy, and chemical reaction. So returning to our problem, we've now determined that because it's asking for the temperature profile, that we're doing a microscopic problem. So now it's time to sketch the problem. And we have a tall, wide slab. So I'll try to draw it here in 3D. So it's very tall, it's very wide, and its thickness is of some finite amount. The temperature at this left wall is given as T1 and the temperature at the right wall is given at T2 and we'll take T1 greater than T2. So the first step to applying the microscopic energy balance is to choose the coordinate system and it, because it's a rectangular slab a rectangular coordinate system would be a good idea and I'm going to choose X to be the direction that is through the thickness of the slab. I can choose Y to be the upward direction and Z to be the third direction. With the temperature, with the coordinate system chosen, we now move on to the microscopic energy balance. And I have a zoomed in version here that's easier to see. This is the microscopic energy balance in Cartesian coordinates. It has a number of terms and in order to solve this equation we have to apply our particular problem and simplify this as much as we can. The first term asks does the temperature change with time? Going back to our problem statement we see that we're asked for the steady state temperature profile and at steady state the temperature will not be changing with time and therefore this term goes to zero. The next three terms all have velocities in them and this is asking a question about velocity within our body, within this uh, domain in which we're trying to solve for the temperature profile. So the question is inside this solid slab is there any velocity? And the answer there is no. So although there will be some temperature variations in the slab, since the velocity is zero, all three of these terms are zero. The first term on the right hand side asks the question, does the temperature vary in the x direction? We chose the coordinate system 
and we chose that the x direction was this direction through the thickness and we know that when x equals zero the temperature is equal to T1 that's one of our boundary conditions and when x is equal to say H the thickness of the slab the temperature is equal to T2 so clearly the temperature does vary in the x direction so this term definitely stays the third term asks the question does the temperature vary in the y direction here's the y direction this is a very tall slab and the heater is on the left and there's a heater on the right and there's no reason to assume there'd be any temperature variation in the y direction and so no in fact there is no temperature variation in the y the z, the temperature direction, variation in the z direction would be asking in this depth direction uh, is there any variation in temperature and again because we have this heater on the left heater on the right there is no variation in that wide slab and so that is zero as well the remaining term is the source term and the possible sources that go with that term are viscous dissipation due to vigorous flow that's not happening electrical current flowing that's not happening there is no electrical potential applied across our slab and chemical reaction is not happening and therefore this source term is zero so now we have simplified the energy equation on the left hand side it's zero on the right hand side it's k over rho cp times the second partial t with respect to x we can divide through by k over rho cp and we get zero equals partial squared t with respect to x squared so there's the partial differential equation we need to solve this is a particularly easy equation to solve because we've already taken that the temperature does not vary in the y and z directions and so we can immediately notice that we could write this as the total derivative with respect to x equal to zero the next step is to solve that equation so here's the equation to solve d second t with respect to x squared equals zero to integrate that once the integral of the second derivative is the first derivative the integral of zero is zero but we, almost, we must always add an integration constant we're looking for the temperature profile so we're going to integrate again we get t the integral of the derivative of a function is equal to the function the integral of a constant is the constant times the variable we're integrating and then we always add an integration constant if we use then the two boundary conditions we discussed previously we can solve for the two constants of integration we have that at x equals zero t equals t1 and x equal h t equals t2 and we can solve to solve for the heat flux we need Fourier's law of heat conduction Fourier's law of heat conduction is that the flux is equal to minus the thermal conductivity times the temperature gradient once we've applied the boundary conditions we'll have the temperature gradient it's going to be equal to C1 so we can write that in here and when we multiply by minus the thermal conductivity we'll have the flux